This episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Driveline 2.0. Driveline has listened to all of your feedback from uh, our original run of ads and is now launching version 2.0 with all kinds of new improvements to the system. Uh, patches. Uh, patches are real, physical patches you can earn through getting points on Driveline via miles traveled, videos posted, and more. Beyond just digital badges that no one else sees, patches can be shared on social media or in the real physical world to show that you are a master road tripper. Uh, there's improved drive it functionality. Now when another user drives a route you've created, you can see it. See how your fellow motorists take to your favorite drives. Uh, in addition to the roads driven, we've got new pins used to share places you stop off at, whether uh, it's a restaurant, a scenic overlook, a store, a hike, or a bathroom break, share photos with others to make it easy to find the best spots. And there's an optional mini map in the video. When you shoot videos of your drives using the Driveline app, you can overlay a mini map. That way, when people see your videos, they know what roads you're driving. Driveline 2.0 combines the best of what Driveline originally set to offer with customer feedback rigorously implemented. Driveline in no way promotes street racing. Street racing is illegal and dangerous, and if you get in trouble for doing it, don't blame us, because here we are right now telling you it's illegal and stupid. Get the Driveline app in the iOS store now and hit the road. And we've got Auto Tempest. You know about AutoTempest.com. It's the best, easiest, slickest way to search the widest possible net with the fewest possible clicks, right? It searches all the top car listings in one place. Sites like Cars.com, eBay Motors, CarSoup, CarsDirect, and many more. Plus individual dealers and private sellers, places you didn't even know existed. You can also compare with results from AutoTrader and all of Craigslist. I'm not talking about local Craigslist, I'm talking about national all of Craigslist. So you can find the exact car you want for the best price without wasting a time of your time browsing around to all these different sites like maybe you don't maybe you want a new car maybe you don't even really want a new car maybe you literally are just doing what i do when i have free time and just browsing around oh what are 87 thunderbirds going for these days you know you want to cast that wide net there's no reason you want to do double work to get the same result that's why autotempest.com is what's up it does all that double work for you at the same time time. Uh, they've been a sponsor for a long time. We're happy to have them. So if you're looking for a car to buy or sell, see what you get for your car, check out autotempest.com. It is there for you. And uh, lastly, cue the Sarah McLaughlin music, because I got to talk to you for a moment about the Humane Society. The National Humane Society has two things going on that I am very passionate about, animals and fast cars. In fact, if you look at my Instagram, there's pretty much only three things on my Instagram. Cars, watches, and my cats. That's it. And uh, the National Humane Society is giving away a Porsche 911 and a Tesla Model S. They provide uh, homeless and neglected animals with nourishing food, life-saving medical care, vaccinations, and safe shelters. And if you've ever seen uh, a, a little kitten's face with Sarah McLaughlin music playing, you cannot help but cry, and you want to snuggle that kitten. I know you do. I want to snuggle that kitten. The National Humane Society is fundraising in a way that, uh, that I think all you guys will really get into. They're raffling off a brand new uh, 911 Carrera cab, cabriolet, and a brand new Tesla Model S. These sound like the most LA cars ever. So if you're in LA, you probably really want to win this stuff. Uh, the car, every donation is being matched. Uh, so that's really good. So whatever you put in is getting doubled up. And that will double your contribution so you can really make a difference. Help now. You can win a uh, Porsche 911 or a Tesla Model S. Your donation will go directly to help save animals. Use promo code the smoking tire and get five extra raffle tickets free. Who doesn't love free? Go to the national, nope, not the, go to nationalhumanesociety.org now. That's nationalhumanesociety.org now. Enter, use code promo, promo code the smoking tire and get five extra tickets 
free. And uh, that's it for the ads, folks. Uh, we got a really good show for you today. Uh, sit back, relax, pour a cup of something, and chill out because it's time for the smoking tire. Smoking Tire Podcast. That's that's what it means when we start. Hello. What's up? Good day. How'd you doing? Good talk. We have ditched Timmy. He had to go. He had to go. He had to go. We, no, <laughs> no. To go. no. Timmy's out. He's off for the day. But uh, we got Marcus and Grayson from Roads Untraveled in the studio. Hello, boys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Welcome. Welcome in. What's this? What's French? Oh, I don't know. I li- <laughs> took French in like grade 11 then stopped. Bienvenue. It's gone. You're the other side uh, of Canada. Wasn't grade 11 like three years ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish. <laughs> Welcome to uh the sunny side. Finally, yeah. Last time it was absolutely pouring rain. The LA River was full. It was last amazing, time was right? Yeah. That happened actually one day last month. It, did. it was a it was big, big rain and there was like class five rapids in the LA River. It was gangster actually. Yeah, it was cool. But that month when you were here last time, that rain, like did a shoot for like automobile magazine in my mustang it looked like it was fucking japan or something it was, it was all everything was lush yeah it was so nice changes it completely yeah now it's like back to the desert yeah <laughs> now, it feels, now it looks like july again yeah Weird. yeah yeah so what's happening what brings you guys back to los angeles the well, weather <laughs> yeah the weather is probably number one to be honest we haven't seen rain back home in vancouver for like two weeks sorry we haven't seen sun in vancouver oh for really two weeks. Uh, two weeks it's been raining nonstop. That's a bummer. Yeah. Vancouver is so nice, though. Like last October, we had 28 days of rain. Oof. That's, that's, like a, that's, that sucks. that's why I don't live in Oregon. Yeah, that <laughs> sucks. Ruins an otherwise lovely Canada Great experience. Oh, I yeah. went to Vancouver Island, which was really nice. Right. Okay. How'd you like it? Quiet, but yeah. very pretty. Yeah. The people uh, over there are very different from Vancouver people. They seemed... I, and I didn't meet a lot of them. I only uh, interacted on a, uh, a car-to-car basis with them, and they seemed very obedient. <laughs> say, they were happy to have you. They really... Ob- not the way I was driving. I'm oh, sure okay. you, they yep. were not. I, got, I, I was, thought I was late for a flight, and I drove like I was late for a flight, yeah. but it turns out wasn't late for that flight <laughs> once i got there i was quite early <laughs> but uh vancouver island motorsport circuit was yes. a nice track have you guys run that yet we've ridden shotgun there and we filmed a few things but we've i've never driven the track no. pretty cool track yeah it's very small yeah um, like we were following area 27 i'm not sure if you're familiar. no everyone keeps talking about that one what's that one about well, we did a couple of videos on our youtube channel you should check it out so like that was kind of my first experience kind of exploring the different techniques and of building a track designing a track uh-huh. um and we were um, interviewing one of the founders or something like that and he kind of made the comment well you know it kind of makes the track on the island look like a go-kart track and i thought okay well you know he, he's just kind of saying that but when i got there it's like this is a go-kart track yeah i mean a small track can have that feel if you're in a car that's you gotta have you gotta you have to size your car you know appropriately yeah i had a panamera, a panamera turbo s at Vancouver oh, yeah. island yeah. which yeah i agree it felt a little go-kart tracky what were you in uh i, was, I rode shotgun in a tuned mini cooper s about like 350 oh. at the wheels well that's it's a lot of power for a fucking mini, but yeah. that's the right size. Yeah. That's the right size car for that track. It was. I was. I, w- I don't know about you, but when I run shotgun on a track or anything and I'm shooting at the same time, oh, I get nauseous after yeah. like a lap. No, that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. But I don't. That's I, I stopped. I don't ride right seat people. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that's what they have <laughs> suction cups for, dude. Yes. You got to use, yeah. you know, Zach. I'm usually pretty good. But when I was flying the, the car mounted drone we have filming drive, so I was looking at the screen, trying to control the yaw while the track is going all these different directions. After 20 minutes, I got pretty sick, and it stayed there for about 30 minutes. Morningstar had a had a really he could, he could focus on that for mm-hmm. a while actually. He, it was a unique skill. Yeah, to Morningstar. But uh, what's area? Can you pull up what that area 27 racetrack looks like? Everyone keeps talking about mm-hmm. that one. It's a private track. It's like a private uh, driver's club. Uh-huh. So you have to buy a membership. Yeah. And um, I think they're all sold out now. They but they're just building. Sold out, yeah. yeah, they're building like a beautiful resort there. Like what are the uh, what do the memberships go for? Twenty uh, five. No, it's f- about forty grand for the initial fee. Forty Canadian. Yes. Yeah, so, so like, like thirty five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and then after that, this guy's got a nice promotional video going on here. I like his. This is an updated site. I've wow. actually seen this before. Is he yeah. selling? Is he, is he selling wine or a racetrack? Right? <laughs> oh, I, they're this doing both. Wine country. <laughs> yeah. Designed right by Jacques Villeneuve. How about that? Oh, here we go. Here's a little video of it in car. That's not YouTube, so we can let this play. Yeah, right. we, we it's had got a great little the, backdrop uh, happening. Can you can't full wow. screen that? Can you, Zach? Oh, that is YouTube. Vimeo. It's Vimeo. Oh, it's Vimeo. Oh, d how delightful! Look at the track map of this. Okay, so this track looks like you took a, a spaghetti noodle and just hucked it at the wall. <laughs> it looks it looks tight, but uh, this I'm looking. I'm getting some Thunder Hill. What do you think, Zach? As we as we wind around, I mean, this track. definitely looks that way and doubles back on itself, almost like Lagunas. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got like a like a punched in Omega at the end of it. I don't. God, what a cool I'm looking track. I'm surprised. Track. It doesn't seem to have a lot of elevation considering it's surrounded by mountains. This Does corner it? up at the top is pretty much the biggest elevation change this corner uh no, no we're approaching uh, approaching <laughs> yeah. a hairpin so it's like it's it's cool. it's ma it's mainly flat ish but it's got wow it's that island is so pretty yeah right oh, here's up a here. big uphill yeah. like yeah. a that's game. a good uphill that's like a mini uh mini at the end of coda when you walk to the that, left like we did a track walk when you walk yeah. that that's a uh that's how you really nice, get a feeling wow it's a that's great a, section that's there. a nice drop this track rocks now, like um, the one thing they talked <laughs> about, and it was really cool, is that they didn't want to disturb the natural landscape, so they basically kept all the corners mm -hmm. and the elevation change natural to the surroundings. So they literally just took a 3D rendered model of the area and just kind of threw down some lines and kind of built it off of that. So it, it's really cool how they incorporated the kind of the natural surroundings. And right below this, like you're up on a hill, mm -hmm. um, if you like, there's some aerial shots, and it shows like there's a massive lake just below that with like vineyards everywhere. It's the most incredible That's fantastic. thing. Fantastic! I gotta go. I gotta go to this place. What that looks? I see. There's. I feel a lot of Thunder Hill there for sure. It really looks a lot like that. It's, that's beautiful. Where's Thunder Hill? Thunder Hill's in Northern California, I think. It's fuck. Thunder Hill is so far in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's like, like an hour and a half northeast of San Francisco. It's, and it's really, really like off right off the five, which is like the you know the main highway that goes all the way to Washington. There's just nothing there. It's a town of willows, but it's, it's so, a gorgeous, fun yeah. track. Yeah, they have and they have two road courses and a huge skid pad area. Too. And at the right time of year, it looks like the the backdrop from Windows ninety eight with that perfect mm -hmm. blue and that perfect green. <laughs> right. It looks just like that. It's amazing. Um, but uh, that area twenty seven track, wow! I see, a, I smell a value over there. It's it, lots what of was fun, it? Yeah. Motor, like, um, there was a. They filmed a video there recently uh, for the a motor trend. Yeah, film, motor they trend. shot a uh, ignition with the oh, new yeah? ZL one oh. up there. Yeah, ZL one's a good car. I was kind of well, understandably, but I was kind of disappointed that they didn't do um, the the lap, the actual track timed lap at area twenty seven. I think they had to do it. They got to do that shit at Willow, right? Yeah. So it all matches. Yeah. Do they do streets? Do they, they do streets, don't they? Zach, do they do streets yeah, at Big streets. Willow? They streets. do streets, right? Mm -hmm. I just went to Big Willow the, on Friday. Did a Z28 uh, race car at Big Willow. Ooh. It was fun. And uh, shout out to the Fusion of Ideas guys. Um, I'm jealous of that racetrack. Now I, uh, there's Thunder Hill. See? Looks like Windows. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, same kind of uh, same kind of vibe, right? The rolling greens surrounded by. This photo uh, looks mountains. like it was taken from an F fifteen fighter jet by someone who had like Parkinson's, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little out of focus. But you can see it's very green, and they have these uh, two different road courses um, with some fun little weird hills and stuff. And it's and in parts it feels almost narrow. Yeah, like there's a lot of runoff, but also not a lot of runoff. No, yeah, it's like there's grass, but there's a ravine in that grass. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. And then look right about May, pull up that picture there. Right about May. It turns that color. Yeah. And then it stays brown all the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. But great track if you guys ever do. Uh, when you come to LA, do you do anywhere? Uh, are you doing the rest of Cali at all? Or? So we drove down from Vancouver in Grace's oh. car. So what, do you, what, do you, what do you drive in? 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt with oh. 135 to the front wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you get your ignition lock checked out? Um, well, initially I had the problem. They said you can't put uh, anything on your keychain because yeah. it'll turn off your car when you're driving. <laughs> yeah. I said, screw that. I don't want to carry around like random keys in my pockets. So I just left it on. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not i'm not carrying two sets of keys okay I, i'm not doing that if the I key remember, falls out and the car turns off yeah i remember during i reviewed one of those cars in texas and i was able to like hit the brakes and the keychain swung and we were, we were able to do it to shut the car off wow it was fuck yeah it was fucked up yeah I'm scary. <laughs> for real putting my life in danger i had no idea about this yeah. well it's fixed now <laughs> it well yeah now it is right but 
Oh, that shit is funny. Well, yeah. Worst case scenario, the engine turns off. So it's not like you lose control of the car or something. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. power. Some cars, your power steering turns off <laughs> yeah. or, the, or the steering wheel could your lock, steering when, your lock. when your engine That's, turns off. That could be the issue. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, fine. If you're in a gentle corner and the steering turns off and then that highway straightens out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would, I would it take wouldn't the, be ideal. Take the keychain off before running turns eight and nine at Button Willow. You're going to have a real hard time on that exit. Mm-hmm. Right, shit. I said I meant Willow Springs. Retard. Either any track. Any track. Any track. <laughs> any track really doesn't matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. So are you guys filming or chilling? We we are filming. What Trying are you to filming? F- film as much as possible. Uh, modified cars, um, a bunch of everything. We had a couple stock cars. Um, trying to get variety. Basically, whatever we can get our hands on. To you be doing? Are you, oh, so you're really doing real work, huh? Yeah, I mean, it costs money to be here uh, for a month, <laughs> <laughs> so we got to make that money back. Well, this yeah. was four days ago. You guys yeah. were filming. Uh, that's like someone's what is Porsche. This? Some fast. You drove this car. <laughs> Derek Whitaker. I, oh, it's Derek's car. Oh, I love Derek. He's great. Awesome He's a guy. hilarious yeah. guy. Yeah, that and that car is fucking. I drove that car in the rain. Fans of the show may remember this vehicle. There it is. That's a beautiful Porsche as a narrow body turbo car and notable because it started raining at the beginning of our drive and the we came upon a guy who had crashed into a ditch right in front of us in the <laughs> drive. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's oh, a that's, that's, that's a nice too. car, man. That's a good look. It's kind of outlawed out. That mm-hmm. white with gray stripe. Derek is a man of aesthetic. Yes. He gets, he understands. We, we compared, he's basically the closest to Hank from Californication that we've met since we've been uh, down here in LA. <laughs> he drives the Porsche, just kind of the overall attitude. He like, you know, writes His music. Porsche's too <laughs> nice. If he was Hank from Californication, he'd have to have like a shitbox Porsche. Isn't that funny that his shitbox Porsche would be like worth, you know, like 48,000 <laughs> yeah. bucks. Well, now. Like, he was talking about how like each like ding and scratch kind of has character and he doesn't want to fix it because it, you know, it, it kind of like, it has a story behind it. So he was uh, shooting an interview and he says, oh, this is where I hit a bird. <laughs> it's just kind of like a little dent on the side. And um, yeah, that's what kind of reminded me. A bird me of. dented the car? Yeah, something like that. We has 600 horsepower, so... Yeah, is it six hundred now? It's four twenty wheel. Oh, I guess that's I guess that's pretty close. It, I couldn't, I, you know, I could barely get on it because I was on Bouquet Canyon Road and it was raining. It was real wet. It's, is it on slick still? Uh, it is on um, our triple eights. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. <laughs> it was on. Uh, it was either triple eights or like or what are the others? The R A R A seventy ones are those slicks? R A ones. R A ones. I had those on my MR two. It was something that did not have any real tread on. It. <laughs> <laughs> Fun car though. Yeah, Do lots you of much, fun. Get much sea time? Uh, yeah, probably half an hour, I'd say. Cool. Just good. It was a lot of fun. Let's see. What what road is that you on? Is that Ensenal? Upper Big Tonga. Oh, you went to the forest. First time, by the way, in Angela's forest. Isn't like, it the best? Ago. Oh, yeah. it's amazing. It's, it's the best. Yeah. yeah. You it's guys like are Malibu so without people. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did Malibu for the first probably three. We shot a Focus RS in Malibu the first oh, yeah? week. And then we went to Angela's forest forest we're like okay we're not going back to malibu yeah no malibu is is uh it serves a purpose it's great for the uh social scene i was out there on sunday did you guys see that video of that p1 crunching on a curb no that oh, went around yes. oh yeah, yeah we did yeah, yeah. yeah i was i was standing there for that one that was a good crunch <laughs> that was a that was a real nasty crunch is that like a situation where you don't try to stop that like if you see it from happening it's not even worth it to be like hey stop stop uh no 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 you of course would see. well yes but <laughs> I didn't I wasn't I wasn't st- I I was there I I wasn't in a position okay to stop. yeah right. no I would have stopped him for sure I was like on, on the at another angle you right. know I, I couldn't tell but there was a he probably should have seen that curve <laughs> I mean presumably the same guy backed the fucking thing in probably did he was looking at the backup and he just yeah. forgot yeah and poor guy that's up. a shame Ooh, real bad I saw I saw uh, somebody uh, at that show last time I was there someone crunched the fuck out of an, an old M6's front front chin splitter too oh, yeah. such a good looking car yeah so it nice. happens that show's good. Malibu is great for the social scene, but if you really want to drive, you need to be in the forest. Mm-hmm. Like we don't have any real driving roads around where we live. You have to drive kind of at least an hour plus outside of the city in order to... Well, that's the forest from here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a, in, um, in Canada, it's like our biggest highway is like three lanes each direction. Uh-huh. So like you have like pedestrian streets that have more lanes than our highways. So it's kind of like there's not a whole lot of good areas where you can go filming, where you can do drive-bys right. because you're having to loop back and forth and everything like that oh, oh the, here it's incredible yeah though. yeah yeah like the forest just, on a weekday you can pretty much you know you can have most of it to yourself yeah. and mm-hmm. as long as you um we found i mean this is a little inside baseball for those of you who happen to film cars in the angeles forest we found uh <laughs> tripods seem to be the sticking point 
with the local authorities. They don't really care uh, if you're rocking mounted shots or uh, even if you're doing like car to car kind of stuff, as long as people aren't hanging out of cars. Right. But for some reason, they see someone on the side of the road with a tripod and the the professional light bulb goes on in their head mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it's time to start giving you crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's, you know, it's weird. Well, because so many people own GoPros. Like, my yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah. my aunt owns a GoPro so they could be like, well, is this worth stopping and asking? Like, no, we're just getting shots of our car. Yeah. But if yeah. it's tripods, like, all right, now you went and bought a tripod. Why'd you buy the tripod? What are you doing, you know? Especially mm-hmm. if you've got, you know, like a carbon fiber tripod with like a 70 to 200 or right. something, mm-hmm. you know, one of like a big tan telephoto yep. lens. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, or drones they be they're kind of dicks yeah well, what's the drone situation here yeah we've technically been not lucky. allowed Te- okay well technically if you're filming a commercial project you need to have a permit for it some jurisdictions you have to give them a flight plan beforehand right. like where you're going to be what altitude and whatnot um some require you to have uh like ranger supervision the whole time some don't um there's also your proximity to an airport, like as everybody knows. So Angeles Crest is not near like a tiny airport. Um, I crashed a drone in Iceland because (laughs) all of Iceland is an airport. Like we were not near a big city. And so I'm flying this drone along a lavender field, like two feet off. And it just goes two feet, 18 inches, 16 inches, and just flips over into the lavender field. I was like, what the, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And I pull up my phone and look up Iceland airfields and the whole island is dotted with airplane icons. <laughs> oh, no. So there's just all these old like lava field things yeah. that are airports and so that's why it happened. So in, in LA that's it's funny. like you know if you if you get caught like you could get in trouble. Um, some jurisdictions when we filmed in Colorado for Drive, uh-huh. we cleared drones with them and they were like, "Oh, it's good you did that because we have a person in our department who just watches TV and if they see Colorado on it and if they see certain shots, they will go back and retroactively look and see if that was permitted." Wow. Yeah. You always wonder if someone's going to do that. I don't think mo- I think a, a lot, lot of jurisdictions are pretty <laughs> bare bones nowadays. This guy said it like you won't believe this, but I, well, um, I've seen a lot of I've seen in tangentially quite a few TV shows that go that kind of distract the ranger one way, do their shit the other way, and hope no one has a problem with it later. Mm-hmm. Just uh, tangentially have seen that. I was down in Nicaragua, and <laughs> flying a drone anywhere in that country is uh, illegal, and they will oh, really? arrest you, and you'll, like, you'll get oh. uh, jail time. Oh, so about, I, I'm, well, I'm surprised. What's Nicaragua like? Um, it, it's nice. Like I was in San Juan del Sur when um, we were staying at this hostel called the Naked Tiger, and we had the guy. And What's it's like that about? Oh, like, it has a weird history. I'll tell you that no, much. No, not the Naked Tiger. <laughs> but, yeah, like, he, he flew his drone up in the air, and it's like the most beautiful shots, like super scenic, like just gorgeous. And uh, he's saying like, yeah, like my buddy got like arrested. Like you know, it's yeah. you don't want to be caught flying a drone here, regardless if it's like this big or this when big. When you get arrested there, are you getting arrested to then give them a you know, pay your fine and then they let you out. Like, because that country lets a lot of shit go. And uh, Nicaragua is a lot more developed in terms of their police force than the surrounding areas. Like, I we basically drove from Vancouver to Chile. Um, my friends, Fuck like, off. I didn't drive the entire time, but like, I flew in and we drove from basically. Uh, like, my friend did like a year long trip, so I had like two months. So I stayed from with Canada them. to Chile. Yeah. Um, and wow. you, you have to basically ship your car from Panama to Colombia because you have the Darien Crossing, which is yeah. like 50 kilometers of the most dangerous territory yeah, yeah, yeah. in the entire world. And so you have to basically get a tanker <clears throat> and ship it out. That's so interesting. We yeah. had this dude on the podcast uh, who wanted to drive from Tierra del Fuego to Alaska. And he wanted to do it in a fucking VW Combi, like the Brazil spec water cooled Volkswagen microbus. Okay, yeah. And he had gotten as far as L.A. and he came on our show and he'd been on through on his 10th engine rebuild or something. The combi, are he, you talking about combi life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know I him? love that guy. Yeah, yeah we were going to film with him when he was in Vancouver. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And uh, he, uh, I changed his life by giving him an old iPhone and introducing him to Tinder. Yeah. And he never had to sleep in that van again. <laughs> oh, that's but yeah, yeah. So wait, what did your friend drive to... Well, what did you guys drive? He had a Westphalia, but he ended up selling that because the exhaust fumes were coming through the vents. So you get yeah. like dizzy after yeah. going up a hill. Um, but he ended up getting a like, 92 Toyota pickup. And Brilliant. he put like That's a camper perfect. on it. It had a rebuilt perfect. engine, like almost 400,000 kilometers or a few Americans, kind of like 300,000 miles, I guess. 400,000 like, K is yeah. 60, 120. 
240,000 miles. Yeah. So um, basically, he made it from Vancouver all the way to Ecuador. And the only thing that went wrong is he had a flat tire. That's fucking awesome. And this was like... I told half- Ben he should have bought a Previa. If he had bought a Previa, he would have done the whole... The Did Previa, you, the saw, mid-engine one? Oh, it's mm-hmm. the best. Okay, yeah. I saw you just pulled up Ben's website. Was he... Yep. Where is he? Did we, did we ever... Did he ever make it there? What happened to him? Uh, looks like he's got a lady with him now. Of course on the he website. does. But like, you know... Like, like a white... Like, like he wiped it up? As a team. Oh, you what's know, his most recent we are ben update? And Leah. We're is? nomadic travel vloggers. Um, <laughs> I love this guy so much. He was so great. This is a trailer great. for... Alaska. I don't want to play this video. Asta freak out. Alaska season five. Did he ever? Did he ever make it to? Alaska? This was posted on October fifth, uh, twenty oh, seventeen. Man, so he's still going. We finally arrived to Alaska. Yes, and then we had to leave again. <laughs> Pull that up on the on the screen for. Oh, the, yeah, what am I doing? Sorry. Yeah, what are you doing? He. It's like into the wild. This guy. I love Ben. His videos are awesome. <laughs> like, they're so cool. Just like, him and his dog. Yeah, picking up. Chicks. Guess how the van's doing? Oh God. Uh, <laughs> How's it it needed a new transmission, and the one we needed was very rare and hard to find. <laughs> so we had to leave the van here in Alaska alone, um, and, and now they, he's on a sailboat? they had to find a way out of Alaska. <sighs> they found a sweet ride wow. sailboat. Wow, this guy, this is that the the Christopher what's his name bus? Is that the Into the Wild bus? In there? Uh, <laughs> wow, this is this guy is gangster Ben. If you are out there. Call us on your way back down. Sail on through. <laughs> I love that guy. So the Toyota pickup truck, you made it to... Uh... I, I flew out of Nicaragua. Like my friend, it okay. took like almost a year, if not more. Um, so I left him around there. But he uh, made it down to Ecuador with having nothing wrong other than a flat tire. And for like a good section of that trip, there's no paved roads. Like you're yeah. talking about big potholes and yeah. like the middle of the jungle kind of thing. And um, he did have to, f- um, when he was in Peru, I think he had to get um, new leaf springs fabricated. Um, but of course, he's in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. So yeah. it's like, where are you going to get these? So we basically went to like a a fabrication shop if you want to call it that and it was a day's worth of labor um it was like parts and everything like that plus he took the guy out for dinner afterwards <laughs> and it was like a hundred dollars canadian yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like you know just threw uh, new leaf strings uh, on and steak <laughs> y cuatro cervezas y <laughs> <laughs> he then like sold the car in chile um and he made money off of it because like vehicles are hard to get down there so when as soon as you cross over then it's like increases in value so he charged transportation fee basically yeah there you go that's so awesome but like he was taking photos of the different cars from that area and you can buy like amazing classic cars in mint condition because they don't really swap them out they just like toyotas and old ones in chile in chile and you can get them for like a couple thousand bucks and up here they'd be worth like 20 30 plus really like they're flawless um so what are you guys doing why why isn't this the business Honestly, I was considering it. Um, Sounds like, fun. You Let's go down. In, yeah. The, yeah. Well, yeah, there's a 20, 25 year import rule here. It's 15 years in Canada. So as long as it's uh, 15 years or older, we can import into Canada. Yeah. I'm jealous of you guys through 15. I know. They should be at 15 here. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. It's and in California is the hardest of all. But that's a smog thing. Yeah. I can't even hate on that. It's probably good. No. It's yeah. pretty smog. It's probably <laughs> good. I like our air most of the time. Okay. For the first couple of weeks here, it was the, the clearest I've ever seen LA. It's nice when it's clear, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. It was You great. should have seen it with the fires a couple of weeks ago. Right, yeah. Or um, at this point, a couple of months ago, I guess. It was gnarly. There was like a red. It felt like, pro- I wasn't alive then, but it felt probably like what the 70s were like here with this thick, and everybody got sick. Mm-hmm. Everyone had like upper respiratory infections. Wow. And, uh, you know, the fires were in Ventura. So where I live in Venice, like it kind of curls around towards Malibu and you can actually sort of see it. And when they would drop the uh, the fire retardant stuff on there, it would make like this nuclear looking mushroom cloud. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, oof, Let's okay. hope they That's have just, this under control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was gnarly. But like it's, the no. fires kept on going for a long time. Like they were yeah. in Southern California not too soon after we arrived, I think. Or maybe... Um, like maybe like a month before we came down, I heard that the fires were still going in southern parts. Dude, wildfires some crazy shit. The wind takes they were it. It's big. It's dry it here, big. and it just it just it goes really. At one point, someone said it was moving at like four miles an hour or five miles an hour. Like, damn, wow. it's going. Yeah, it, it goes um, really really quick. Because I mean, yeah. you guys have seen up at, up at uh, Angeles Crest, like it's really dry, yep. and all those bushes are made are twigs with oxygen. Like that's all they are. <laughs> you know, the chaparral or whatever they call it. It's just like 
tumbleweeds that are in the ground. Mm-hmm. So I was just going to light on fire really quick and just goes up a hill, down a hill, up a hill, down a hill. And then when you get the, you know, the wind almost always blows one way, west to east, almost, you know, 99% of the time. But on the days when you've got a fire combined with the, the Santa Ana winds, when it blows the other way, it's like, uh oh, this is going to be a big fucking problem because, mm-hmm. like, whatever the world is equipped to handle this direction wind but not that direction wind you Mm -hmm. know craziness we flew into san francisco at the end of september um we were doing a project cars launch thing and they got mclaren's video game project yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so then um like marcus drove the mclaren around the track and then uh they went brought us inside and you played on the computer it was like oh yeah you compare compare. what track was it sonoma fun great track isn't it first time ever on a track (laughs) Really? Doing like lead follow in a twelve C six fifty S and a uh, five seventy. Yeah. Oh right, really? Way to set, that is why they way have to lead set follow. Hundred percent. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, oh I would have learned more if it had been something slower. But oh, not. Of course. Yeah, of I mean, course. McLarens are awesome. But yeah, no. Yeah. And a McLaren is your first time on track. It's just don't fuck this up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And they were like, traction is set in whatever the sport, but. Yeah. If you put it to track, you're, you're nothing's. Yeah, yeah you can't yeah. do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Isn't yeah. Sonoma fun though? Oh, it's great. Yeah, cool little racetrack. Yeah, but we lucked out timing wise because like a week after we left, that's when the fire started and oh, it just yeah. went through the yeah. um, the wine. There area. was smoke there when we got well, right when we got to uh, San Francisco. Oh yeah, it was pretty. This is the downside, you know. Smoky. Sunshine's free, weeds legal, <laughs> but we might burn your shit to the ground <laughs> once a year, maybe. Yeah, and maybe an earthquake. And then there's a mudslide on 101. <laughs> a mudslide. You guys see that? It, oh, there's a couple of people die, right? the highway. Well, here, what happens is, right, so the fire burns out all the trees, mm-hmm. and the trees are what hold all the dirt together. Of course, yeah. And so when the, the trees are gone, and then you have a huge rain, all that mud just slides down the hill and covers the 101 freeway. Some of the, the houses degree. we've seen on these hills back on the, I guess it would be Studio City on the other side of uh-huh. the mountains, like back side oh, of Hollywood. Yeah. And they're just on stilts, two stilts mm-hmm. on the side of a cliff. <laughs> you see that on the beach sometimes That's ridiculous. Here too. Look at that shit. Wow, that's, that's freeway, and then so there. left side is when it how it should look. Exactly, and that the, didn't pull up for some reason. Oh, and then the right side is uh, what happened after the mudslide. That is brutal. Yeah, Big. there you go. Yeah, that's rough. Our our state is so equipped for disaster. <laughs> <laughs> when it rains here, it's like our dude. Our power goes out. Our cable goes out. It fucking floods. It's just nothing. You ever know? You notice houses don't have gutters here. You ever notice that? You walk around, look, houses don't have rain gutters. Well, now I'm going to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't. And like our um the roof of our garage is flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you don't really see that back home. Yeah. But like even like emergency vehicles getting through the city, it's like they can't. No. I, we were going through what is it? Um, USC. USC and I'm stuck in bumper to bumper traffic and then a fire truck comes behind me. So yeah. I, I try to make the little kind of go into the bike lane as far as I can and people are honking at me because well, you can't get by. In it's, California it's required that you pull not just that you give them right away, but that you actually pull out of the way and stop. Right. That's actually a law here, which I thought was stupid until I started seeing ambulances try and get through yeah. bumper to bumper. That's traffic. why they go, they'll they go in the opposing traffic when it's clear. And yeah. they, that's pretty much like their go to all the time. You just see mm-hmm. the most, they just get to the thing and they move over to the left Dude, side. Dude, if I couldn't do the job I do, I would 100% be an ambulance driver. Oh, what a great so awesome. fucking gig. What a great gig. <laughs> you get buttons to press, you can break the law. <laughs> oh, you probably get a sweet badge to flash if you ever get pulled over for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What an awesome yep. job! You just you'd be you'd be the driver apexing everything, and everyone would be like, "Oh, that guy, that guy took that corner kind of yeah. nice." If there's Step an ambulance driver uh, listening who listens to this show in Los Angeles, I would love to go out with you on one shift. I'd, I think that'd be probably pretty gruesome, but also kind of fun. Mm-hmm. I don't want to even see what happens at the back of that ambulance. <laughs> front of the box i only want to be in front of the box co-driver co-driver yes. notes. that'd be a cool video just kind of like the dan <laughs> life of an ambulance driver. i think it'd be cool yeah i think it'd be cool to look at people who drive cool shit for a living like uh you know i'd like to see what a semi truck driver's like and then a fire tr- fire truck driver and like the dude who drives alongside the airplanes Oh, that helps them land. Yeah. The spy, the spy the planes. The spotter guys. Yeah. The spy planes. Or a Saudi Arabian police officer and like, like a Veyron. <laughs> Those uh, things are the, yeah. the the Dubai police marketing fleet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't drive around all day in those. It's like for marketing, right? For yeah. City. But the Dubai police don't even really have a lot of like normal cars either. Mm-hmm. They don't. There's not a lot of like, you don't see a lot of street cops in Dubai. There's a lot of cameras though. That's yeah. yeah right. That says he's never seen someone pulled over. Yeah. But there's just speed cameras everywhere. Yeah. So that's why you could like do burnout on one street and then just don't speed on the next street. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I just shook that camera. The, uh, yeah, it's like that. 
Switzerland. <laughs> Switzerland is like strictest. Oh, why is this place so clean and beautiful? Oh, because they're watching you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do they have a lot of cameras and stuff like that in Switzerland? Yes. Yeah. Switzerland is the worst place on earth as far as I know to speed. Really? Um, there are many cameras and they have uh, penalties beginning one kilometer over and going all the way up to the completely absurd. That's crazy. Is that yeah. the country where it's um, the fine is uh, based off of your income or is that Sweden? No, that's that's Sweden. Okay. Sweden, they do a percentage of your income, which is which you can get a monster if you're a rich guy or girl. But uh, in Switzerland, like for example, I got uh, 16 kilometers over and that was a thousand euro. What? And yeah, you can't <laughs> fight it. You yeah. can't fight it. There's no oh, Finland, thousand Finland euros. as well. I think is Finland home of the hundred thousand dollars speeding ticket. That's the that's the salary Holy one. Crap. The based on your net worth or your salary. I I gotta read it. Okay, you know, I just pulled. Yeah. It. So this guy and here's here's another uh, anecdotal story. I was on this adventure drives rally, Rob Freddy's thing, and someone who was not acting in, in a very intelligent manner at the time, uh, who I actually think is a nice guy, but he he fucked up. And he, you know, and have you been to Sweden or Switzerland before? No, I haven't. Or a, like anywhere in Europe, there's these big long tunnels that go through the mountains, right? Yeah. And you don't make a U-turn in the tunnel, but this person did, and nothing happened. There was no incident or crash or pull over or anything. He went to the hotel. He ate dinner, and when he came back from dinner, there was a cop waiting at his car, and they had followed him on the camera using the camera system from that tunnel, forty kilometers to the hotel. Wow, I thought yeah. Britain was bad. Yeah, so so that's like that's what Switzerland is like. So Switzerland is like when you're up in the Alps, like the 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 high passes, you can drive drive, and it's like our Angeles Forest, and it's beautiful. But on the motorways, it's like you set that adaptive cruise mm -hmm. at 60K or 80K or 100K, and that's it. Wow. So there's a lot of countries that do this sliding scale of fines. Uh, Switzerland, Austria, Finland. This story is from Finland. This is crazy. In 2002, a Nokia executive was fined the equivalent of $103,000 for going 45 in a 30 oh. on his motorcycle. Because he made because he made uh, six and a half million a year euro. So, wow. yeah. Wow. I mean, it sucks, but it kind of makes sense to a certain degree because, <laughs> like, if if you're completely broke and you're driving a crappy car and you have the same ticket as someone yeah. who's a millionaire, but yeah, at the yeah. same time, I mean, that is pretty steep. Right. Like, if the other side of that story is like, if you make thirty thousand dollars a year, you know, your speeding ticket is. 40 bucks you mm -hmm. know what i mean like all right i, I kind of that that's i a, do understand it because you I could, get it because here you know our reckless fine could be like a thousand dollars and if you make six and a half million a year you're like oh great and you just like yeah, pull yeah. out your wallet and it's fine it's like this that's called the rob ferretti <laughs> <laughs> like what was what was the math someone did it was like uh buying a ferrari to a billionaire is oh, like us me. buying yeah, a yeah. t-shirt yeah yeah if i was worth a billion dollars versus like you know what a normal person makes me giving you a t-shirt as a normal person the same as me giving you an Aventador as a billionaire. Right. Right. So that's crazy. <laughs> wow. They did a comparison, like comparing somebody who makes, let's say like $50,000 a year to Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah. And like, if you see a penny on the ground, you won't bend over to pick it up because it's not worth anything to you. If you convert that to Bill Gates, if it was $25,000 on the ground, he wouldn't bend yeah. over because it's not worth it to him. I remember doing that. There, someone made you extrapolate that math. I think I did it in high school or something when yeah. he was the first, like the richest guy. And it was like, he gets to the office and takes a dump and that 15 minutes that he's dumped that he's shitting was like he earned 90 grand or something <laughs> like that that's really it's one of those sad numbers oh yeah there's a there's a site that um, calculates for the companies that make profit per second yeah but that guy so i think 103 grand is a lot for 15 a k over 15 <laughs> yeah. over even you need to have like bit. a cap yeah. right even i mean if like you're rich that's yeah. a that's a big one. <laughs> that's, a big that's pretty much true. losing your car depending on what you're that's driving pretty fucking gnarly yeah <laughs> Wait, so what were the other countries? Austria, uh, uh, Sweden, Finland. Um, oh, sorry. Never mind. Sex, Google failing. Uh, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Austria, France, Switzerland. Oh, Germany too? I they, found that one They all have sliding scales, but oh, okay. Germany is probably not as bad. Like Switzerland is what we all hear about. Yeah. Finland and Sweden, of course. I think maybe it was in Switzerland. I think maybe it goes to your percentage of your income if you're like more than... 20k over it, it once you hit mm. a certain point and it's like reckless then it's 
you know, then it's like go fuck yourself. The trade off is God, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. The air is so clean. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. makes you want to like sing and fucking yodel and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's so nice. It's so nice. You want to like? Oh, I want to move here. And then you got to accelerate to sixty k and hit cruise. Yeah. And go, oh, Back in Vancouver, the, or at least the provincial law is anything 40 kilometers an hour over is an automatic seven-day impound. Wow. Um, and in to it rounds up to about $1,500 in fees and stuff Oof. like that. Yeah, it's pretty But steep. anything under 40, like everybody pins their cruise control. <laughs> 39. 39, right? So and then it's just a whatever, $120, $150 ticket. Yeah. California has a dumb system like that, too, where all violations... So, so when I was in New York, you were allowed 12 points, right, mm -hmm. before you lost your license. And, like, speeding was one, and, you know, an illegal right on red was two, and whatever, and it would add up, right? In L.A., any moving violation is one, okay? Okay. Until you get to, like, a reckless or something. So it doesn't matter if you're five over or 29 over. It's the same. So you might as well go 29 <laughs> yeah. over. The math is in your favor. Like the thing that surprised me the most is that like, again, I drive a Cobalt and I like, I have a radar detector. Yeah. Like I went and bought the Valentine one. So yeah. it would, it's not cheap. It was like $700, something like that. Oof. But um, prices have gone up. <laughs> <laughs> but like, well in Canada, like when you convert oh, it, cause I'm Canada. buying it from the States, right? Yeah. So they were always dicks about shipping and stuff like yeah. that. You can only buy from the one place. Yeah. But like basically um, if I get my car impounded, like Marcus said, like it's only 40 kilometers over and that's going to be $1,500. So if that saves me from one impound, it's paid for itself twice over. Yeah. And, but the thing that I find absolutely amazing is that we filmed with some crazy horsepower cars. Like we did the like thousand horsepower Supra and stuff like that. None of these guys have radar detectors. Nobody so runs. Radar. Nobody does. Like the GT3 RS, he had one. Built I think the Porsche one, um, like the Porsche we filmed here had one. Yeah. Um, See, but here's, I think that is an indicator of, <clears throat> You know, you guys are around a lot of high horsepower cars, right? It's not always about, like, I bet you the average speed that that GT3 RS travels is significantly higher than the average speed that that Supra travels yeah. on any given stretch of oh, sure. anything, right? Yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. That man, Like, I've driven a lot of Supras, and, like, yeah, they're fun to go through four gears, but, like, I don't drive a Supra feeling inspired to like carry sustained speed over a long period of time the way I do in like a GT3 RS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I find that like radar detectors are one of those things in life that you don't realize you need until you buy one. Then when you buy one, you realize like, how have I gone this far without one? Like Wrong. just like thinking I'm going to work and I'm going down the highway, I'm doing 40 kilometers over. If I get my car impounded, I'm going to miss my job. I'm going to get like screwed over from that shoot. And like, that's going to really hurt. And you can't and not go a 40 over. You can't <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> our speed limit's like 80 kilometers on the highway, which is no, like... No, it's I, not. Well, no, there's sections of the highway where it's 80. It goes from like 100 to an 80, like, zone. We, we so, have, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, we basically, we kind of had this concept for a video that we didn't get an opportunity to shoot before we left Vancouver, um, but we're basically going to highlight in kind of a comedic style way, but actually hopefully bring light to some issues, real issues in Vancouver with speed limits being way too low and they they install like or they build a new section of road or whatever and they put those you know those i don't know if you guys have these here the lines that go across the freeway for helicopters yeah yeah so they can time you on the stopwatch yeah, yeah. and it's a, like a 60 kilometer an hour road so 40 uh -huh. miles an hour and everybody's going 120. so what are you going to block all the traffic and go 60. Is we're gonna we're gonna go the speed limit and yeah then just have film you seen it. the video where the guy did that no. Oh, is there's a video from America where someone did okay. that. Yeah. No, I'm not not I'm not trying to blow up your spot like you could do it. You it no, of was course, very yeah. effective in yep. what they did. <laughs> what was the where was it? Do you remember? What? They were trying to show how silly the artificially low speed limits were. And so it was a three wide highway and they went, you know, three wide at the speed limit for like, I don't know, 10 miles or something and by the time they got to 10 miles it was like every like people were like hitting the dirt to like pass them and like pulling out you know getting all crazy and you know road rage and there was a huge gap in front of them and i, f I forget the viral video but it, it someone did do that yeah it was fucked up actually it yeah. was pretty crazy there was a really funny video this guy just did he brought his bicycle to the fcc office and for three days he would bike in front of the office and slow down traffic behind him 
because he was throttling. He was throttling. He was throttling the traffic. <laughs> oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. It was a protest of on net a neutrality on a bicycle. It was what, hilarious. In, in uh, what, is that in Washington? Yeah. So really in, in Washington, does the bicycle get full rights as a car? So no, you can but cops showed up and they're like, "You can't do this." But he just kept coming back for three straight days. He would just like he'd ride like fifteen miles an hour and just right. make a line and be like, "Oh," if, and he would turn around and be like, "If the cars pay me, I will let them go through." That's so. But otherwise, funny. we're just gonna slowly pedal the streets. It's very good. <laughs> really good. It's a good troll. Ten out of ten troll for that mm-hmm. guy. Hundred percent. I like it. Yeah, no, the slowing down highway uh, highway traffic thing to show the speed limit. I mean, it's it's effective. Someone did do it, and the video was, God, I was like, oh, he, I wanted to like hate them. It was like, <laughs> God, your car, those people are all late now because you had to prove a fucking point. Yes. <laughs> get it? Yeah. Or, oh, here he is. Look at this guy. Go back. Look at this asshole. <laughs> 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 this guy just going like. He's not even riding a bike. He's, He's barely, going like like wow. the speed just before a bicycle falls over. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I love he's that. in DC. Uh, so driver. He asked drivers for a five dollar fee, and he would let them go. Um, That's so and then funny. and then he said. Uh, Consumers can pick, can pick the plan that's best for them. <laughs> it's great. Did so he good. have his own cameras, or was this just like he no, got No, that looked like a guy on the street well, he's filming got, that shit. He's got so GoPros funny. front and back on his head, but okay. someone else was just there. Uh, Do you think he's allowed the 12% speed up rule as well? <laughs> so him? funny. Um, yeah. That's very, very funny. Good for him. Good for you, sir. Absolutely. America. <laughs> 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 yeah, a bicycle is fighting against a giant office. <laughs> That's basically. funny. No, it's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's genius. It's yeah. so genius. You can't get away with that shit in certain countries. Oh, that's, that's very a, true. A, a, that'll send you in North Korea. That's not. They won't. <laughs> Kim Kim Jong Un wouldn't take that well. I don't think you're allowed to have bicycles with pedals there. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> just use your feet. It's like I don't know. <laughs> Flintstone it. Yeah, they had the, they had them back in the day. There's a guy who rides a penny farthing on the bike path. <laughs> Let's see. All the time, he yeah, is the yep. most hipster. There's a couple extreme levels of hipster, right? With bicycles, there's the. Uh, it starts with the fixie, which is the fucking worst, right? Because you put some brakes on it. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now they have bicycles. So you know, a truck. There's like uh, suspension lift and body lift. Yep. So now they have bicycles with body lifts. Oh, it's two bike frames two, uh, welded together. Two yep. bike frames welded together. So like seven at the top, and then there's penny farthing guy, and then there's the uh, ellipti go. Those which are is the, funny. Ellip- the elliptical machine. <laughs> what with gears? Yeah. yeah. It's like I want to do. I want to do the motion of an elliptical Show, machine, but be outside. It's ridiculous. a bicycle, but that you elliptical on instead right. of pedaling. Right. <laughs> It's, I see them. <laughs> uh, so what else did you film? You filmed an RS and a. Uh, there is the elliptic. Wait, wait. Those Where are all fixed. There you go. There it is. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh I've yeah, seen I, those. Yeah, I've yeah. seen one of those before. I mean, look at the lighting That's in ridiculous. that picture, though. That guy's. You got some beautiful winter clouds yeah. there. One day we were in Angeles Forest. The first day it looked like that. Yeah, it yeah. was cold in the morning. It was winter yeah. sunrise is where it's at in okay. the forest. Yeah, yeah. You guys, are you going back up there? Are you done? Yeah, we. I mean, we have like four days left. Um, so we hope we hope to get it back up there. But we are going to Mexico tomorrow. Oh, and then we have a few other uh, things to get done. We have to go back it? and get your lens cap. What's in? <laughs> yeah, let's a lens cap in, up me- there. in Mexico. Yeah. In, in Mexico? <laughs> no. Okay. I was like, I'll give you ten bucks. Yeah. What's yeah. Uh, happening in Mexico? Uh, my friend is. He flew to Mexico a couple months ago, and he's hitchhiking from the Gulf Coast um, over to the same guy he drove from down to Chile. Surprise! Um, so right now he's camping in a tent outside of a grocery store in Baja. Um, so he needs a ride home. <laughs> so, no, he's actually doing a pilgrimage from the, um, the border, at the California and Mexico border to BC. Um, oh so God. depending on what weather is going to be like, he <laughs> might end it in California. I don't know. Is but, you saying here? Is this where you guys are going? Is he staying with the Twister? <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. Come on it, in, we got smelly pussy. <laughs> It was absolutely hilarious because it's not like he's he's not loaded, but he has money to you know to spend at hostels and stuff like that. He just doesn't really want to. So you have like the restaurant there with his little tent out front. Oh and- my god, he's at a torrent. <laughs> he's camped outside a torrent. Wow, this motherfucker pitched a tent outside a restaurant. Okay. We're going to hopefully bring some GoPros and kind of shoot the day, so to speak. You're going to get but shot for the GoPros. That's what Grace was saying. He's like, <laughs> even GoPros, he's like, definitely not DSLR. And I'm like, okay. No. Yeah. You just don't want to film people. Um, because yeah. you don't want to film the wrong person. That's what it comes down yep. to. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. All right. We'll just bring our phones. Uh, which city in Mexico is he in? 
Uh, he's What's in Baja. Ensenada, um, I think we're going yeah, to. Yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. Ensenada? Ensenada? Well, he's yeah. going to be there tomorrow. He's not there yet. But. Ensenada's uh, pretty chill as far yeah, as Mexico it's, goes. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the uh, sliding scale of Mexico's chillness. Yeah. Uh, what was in that? I see on your Instagram there, that Focus RS. What was in that? Uh, tuned uh, stock turbo. I think it basically bolt-ons and a tune oh. uh, i was at like 350 at the wheels or something like that oh cool. um head gasket issue fixed and a bunch of exterior stuff <laughs> oh, that, did he did he have the issue he did not have the issue oh, okay but he uh, did he inspect the gasket that was pulled out and was it the correct gasket i don't know oh. i'm not too mm-hmm. sure about that fun car though it's first nice time car. driving a uh, focus oh really yeah yeah they're they're cool aren't they yeah it was a lot of fun did you uh was it a stock suspension yes no w- no God, now I can't remember. I'm I'm pretty sure it was stock suspension. How did you find it? I'm pretty sure. The suspension. Um, I had it in comfort the whole time. <coughs> if that's any uh, yeah indication. <laughs> yeah, it's rough I, as shit, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty brutal. brutal. Yeah, yeah. And like Malibu roads are pretty good. I mean, it was all well, first, second, third, pretty much. Yeah, um, they're the uh, they're they're a little bumpy, Malibu. Yeah, some stuff is. I wouldn't necessarily daily that car, but it's it was like I had a blast. I was yeah. laughing. See, that's the thing. You you it's it's a daily that you don't want a daily with the stock mm-hmm. suspension because mm-hmm. it's beat up. But Zach drove it on my new KW DDC adaptive coilovers. So good, on Ooh, Sunday. Nice. really good. Get that plug in. Very surprising. Yeah, I mean, it's a, no. it's a plug, and also, I mean, they gave them me the coilovers, but they gave them to me so I could talk about how they, they didn't are. Give me give the coilovers. They didn't. And the so, coilovers are fucking good. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> go. They're sweet. They're very good. It yeah. settles really quickly. Uh, it feels how you want it to feel. It's like, yeah, this is how most cars should be, and it's not how most compliant. cars are. Not this how most cars, cars are. should be. It's it's got. We, we say this word a lot is compliance, but like a lot of the Malibu roads, you're mid corner and there are undulations in the tarmac, like several inches tall or mm-hmm. up or down at some points. And we had jumps upsetting. that like totally where we came out of our, our chairs, yep. but the car didn't get like that upset. Yeah. I literally wow. got air out of my seat yeah. in a couple of corners, <laughs> and, but the car just soaks it up, settles really quickly. Yeah. Uh, it's much quieter on the road because I drove it to Vegas on its stock suspension and it was like too stiff noisy and kind of uncomfortable and now it's like Mm -hmm. it's how it should be noisy car yeah for sure yeah well i my new exhaust is actually louder than it was before but the suspension is mellower so and the exhaust has a better tone it's got a really really good it's nice down tune makes sense do you get turbo spool through the exit like when you hear from the outside yes you do especially like when you're like idling around the parking lot it's like Yeah. It's really, really, really cool. It's got that cool, like, back, back, back kind of thing. Yeah, I hadn't off. really heard it. Uh, I went down to pick up, they see that Lotus Evora outside? Oh, oh, yeah. I went to pick yeah. that up this morning at a place called Eurocar, um, which is a dealer down in Costa Mesa that's also uh, the the home of uh, Lotus California now. And uh, <clears throat> I think we, we were at, we were right beside Eurocar, I believe so. We were at the Pagani Service Center. Is that in Costa Mesa? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this they had some neat shit down there, but uh I left the focus down there with them and as they went to pull it around back, I had heard the dude like driving it away. I was like, Oh shit, that sounds dope. <laughs> yeah, it sounded really good. Um, focus is a nice sounding car. Yeah, yeah. Like I was surprised for sure. Yeah. This Lotus is very good. I've only driven it from there to here, so uh, it doesn't have a rear window. I, I've only driven one fo- um, Lotus in the past and I absolutely love the Lotus. I think it's such an underrated car. Like is I'm it sur- a Vora? Um, it was an Exige, uh, the S one. one. It S1. was like a track spec S one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that sounds race car-y. But like, yeah. it's just that it's a gorgeous looking car. It handles like nothing else, and it's you can get them for, like um, used for pretty affordable, like thirty. They bought 40 them grand, out at like, thirty. Yeah, they're all thirty grand used. The Avoras bought them out at like fifty, fifty five. Mm-hmm. So this is a Ford. The one I have is a four ten Sport, which is uh, four hundred and ten horsepower, supercharged six, manual gearbox. Uh, carbon fiber seats, carbon fiber roof. It, instead of a rear window, it has a carbon fiber hatch yeah. uh, with slats on it. Uh, it has it's it's light. I don't know the exact weight yet. I literally got it like a half hour ago, so I'll talk about it a little more in depth. But is this, so far so nice? Is it the uh, replacement for the Avora four hundred? Or yes. Is this, okay. Replacement for the four hundred. Right. So uh, it's th- it just just came out. So the dealer still has like three or four four hundreds. The four hundreds were awesome. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And this is this is actually it's basically the same thing, just with a little less weight and a little more carbon. And it's got a new radio, uh, which is nice uh, with Bluetooth that works mm-hmm. good, which I used. And I don't know. 
Seems to be cool. I'm yeah. going to drive the shit out of it. It's going to be lovely. It's very comfortable. I don't have the seat. All oh, really? I don't have the seat all the way back. Yeah. There's still like probably two and a half inches further. I could move the seat back. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good we car for we tall don't people. get the the three. Fi- I think it's the Sport 350 or the Sport 380 here in North America. I don't believe so. The Exiges, we don't get any of them right, right. now. Um, the Evora is the only car sold in, in uh, Lotus sold in the U.S. right now. Mm-hmm. I've heard we will be getting Exiges. Ooh, that's a great looking car. I love. Yeah, the they're new cool. Exige. Travis Akulski cool. and Jack Baruth at Road and Track got to go to Europe and drive those. So. Mm-hmm. I don't get to do a road and track story with this one because they drove the 430, which Europe gets, and this is the 410. Yeah, but I am excited because it is sort of like. Uh, have you guys done old N- NSX before? Drew NSX? We've shot. Uh, so two years ago, we shot a. Uh, we originally had about five or six NSXs lined up, like mm. first gen. We're just going to do a piece on like the owners. And all club. of them. They're uh-huh. all super tight knit in Vancouver, right? Thought it would be cool to kind of interview, get the all perspectives of the owners. Uh, and we go out. Or no, I think we had four lined up uh, and ended up two extras came out. Most stressful shoot day we've ever had. Six NSXs. Keeping everybody, you know, not bored for four to six hours. Yeah, because you got to be on like yeah. all the time. Right? Yeah, the yeah. whole time. Um, but needless to say, no, we have not uh, had the privilege of driving any NSX yet. That's a shame. All those NSXs and it was all filming and no driving. Well, that that was kind of the beginning where we had driven and filmed a couple of five to seven hundred horsepower cars. But it, w- it yeah. You we're just kind of getting started. You should circle yeah. back to that NSX. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're still good friends with a couple of the owners. So the people who are very into the old NSX and don't particularly like the new NSX, mm-hmm. which I love, um, because it's not NSX enough for them, <clears throat> they want a Lotus Evora 410. Uh, the Lotus Evora 410 is the new old NSX, and it's excellent at that role. Uh, is it still a Toyota engine? In the yeah, Lotus? it's a Camry V6 with a supercharger on it. Perfect. Makes That's 410 so cool. horsepower. It has a pretty durable six-speed manual gearbox. It does not have a lot of known issues. The stereo is a fucking Alpine. So the it should work. Con- the air conditioning is, you know, the shocks aren't adjustable. Mm-hmm. Just don't just set it right. Let it be what it is. Got double wishbone, good brakes. Like, it's basic. Nice. Doesn't have, um, doesn't even have automatic headlights. It's got a key. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, and it's a hundred. This thing's like 114 grand, I think. That seems like it's a, a pretty very good deal. It's a pretty good deal, man. I think it. Can you look up the curb weight of the 410? I don't want to say it's under 3,000 pounds, but I it, I very well might be under 3,000 pounds. Well, because just um, power alone, that's very quickly approaching like supercar territory from five to six years ago, roughly. Yeah, right yeah, no, it's fat. It's yeah. not like it's not. It's manageable fast, and because it's a supercharger. Rather than a turbo, you get a linear curve. You don't get a right now, you know, shove that dies at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, so it it feels just like a bigger, you know, NA motor. Would you get kilograms? What is it in kilograms? Thirteen twenty five. Thirteen twenty five kilograms is twenty nine fifteen. Nice. Yeah, so it's light. That's crazy. It's light. So you've only driven it from Costa Mesa to here. I drove so it forty four miles on the highway. That's okay. all I've done. All right. Sorry, and the Whole Foods parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> Testing the brakes. That's there. it. We can. Uh, if you yeah. guys are going to be in, oh, you're going to Mexico, so you can't come out. I was going to invite you out if you wanted to come come with us on uh, Thursday. We're going to go. Oh, we're just going for the day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Friday's if you our last if day. you, co- if yeah. you uh, retain your heads, come on out and uh, <laughs> no, we're going to do uh, the Lotus and the Ring Brothers uh, Javelin. Uh, Jav- no, Javelin, right? Yeah. AMX. Jav- J- M- AMX. What's the difference between an AMX and an AM? CX Javelin. What do you know? No, I do not know. Uh, Fuck. AMC is like the the unknown muscle car brand. No very, very. You know small. what they are? Yeah, only from Forza though. To be yeah. completely honest with you, it's like a muscle car with like a super short wheelbase and a hatchback. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, like that. Bare bones kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's more like the muscle cars they got in Australia than the ones that right. we had here. Yeah. Um, the Javelin's but, like this weird. It, to me, it's almost like a Superbird and a Camaro smashed together. Yeah. And then the AMX, the only one I've ever been around was Jimmy Day's car. Yeah. Which was like if you took a Nova and then shrunk it, because they're, they're even smaller, with like a very slanted Torino kind of back glass it, wait, to so it. Wait, so is that AMX is the short wheelbase Javelin, right? Yeah. Okay, so the Javelin, I think, has a, a back seat, and an AMX does not have a back seat, I think, and they're they're shortened. Can you get a picture of an AMX up there? Real quick, we would love to come out though. By the way, if you want, if you're yeah, out on Thursday, totally down, yeah, yeah, I have a I have a road that we're going to use that most people don't know about. 
I mean, you could find it, but you're yeah. not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many. Yeah, can you There's get a side profile, Zach? Yeah, there. See, that's what that's an AMX. Yeah, it so does there's look like Nova. yeah. It, doesn't that thing? I mean, imagine a big block in that. Wouldn't that be twitchy as fuck? <laughs> so, uh, what uh, the cool. Ring Brothers one apparently has a thousand horsepower, as you do. So that, that's the spec you guys are. That's coming out for you guys on the shoot, or that's why we're gonna we're gonna go out and shoot that that and the Lotus. Uh, we're gonna pick the Ring Brothers thing. I I I met these guys, Mike and Jim. Um, they're like they're Wisconsin good old boys, but fuck me, can they? Holy shit, look at that boy! Can they fabricate a car? Um, Wait, that's the same car, but that's not the car. The same, that's the wow. Ring Brothers version <laughs> of the same car. Wow. With, so. I think it's got a Hellcat motor in it, right? Someone said it was a thousand horsepower with a Hellcat motor. So Let's there's the stock. And then, oh my God. You know that's a your live imaging, just so you know, yep. Zach. Wow. Okay. Fuck, look at that. Think that think that'll drive good? Crazy. Here's Ooh, why I think crazy. that I think that'll drive good. I think that what are we in? February now? It's far enough from SEMA. <laughs> last time last time I drove I drove one Ring Brothers car just after SEMA mm -hmm. and I was like the first guy to ever drive it and it was like this needs a little fine tuning drove the second one the Camaro in the springtime later after SEMA like a couple months later and it was ace this and was probably Detroit good. Speed did the chassis on this right and Detroit Speed did so the chassis good. on it what's crazy is you look at the yellow car and you're like wow they look at all the fenders they built and then you go back to the stock one and you're like, and like nope, wow, those, are stock. <laughs> those were there yeah the um yeah, you guys should come out for that. That'll be fun. Yeah, that car looks blast. nutty. I bet that drives good. I bet it does. I bet they... I bet... Is that like it's got like a Skyline nose on it, doesn't it? Fuck. Cool. So you're not doing like... A, you're doing comparison or kind of No, no, no. Just, I'm, okay. just, I do, I'm just doing... So the one takes thing. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. not, not doing fans cars anymore. Right. Yeah. I on, I, we only want to spend quality time with the vehicles. Right. Like, not... The fans are cool and all, but like... Driving a car for twenty or thirty minutes to me is not really the quality time I want. Like we're you know. we're at that point where I'd say f still about sixty to seventy percent of our shoots are that half hour to an hour of yeah. seat time. Mm -hmm. um, but more recently, we've been able to get you know a day or two full with the car, and it's That's nice. A lot more relaxing, first yeah. of all, for shooting, um, and it gives you a lot more time to actually you know with the Lotus, you coast to Mesa to here. I yeah. mean, you get to know the car a little bit more. Well, for sh for sh with the Lotus especially, like it's. Sounds Sounds snobby, but like in LA, like to go, you know, if you're doing a press car or whatever, you need to going to get the thing is like half the day. You need to like live with it, you know, you need mm -hmm. to like use it for some stuff. Like when I review a car, like the review is much better. The more time I spend with the car, the better you're going to get. Like, yeah. And the fan cars, it's like a first impression. And the press cars, the stuff I get to take home, it's like you, you get. There's just more shit that comes up. You oh know? yeah, and it's more kind of like coherent because you have yeah. you, have, you have enough time to kind of articulate exactly what you like, yeah, what you yeah, don't yeah, like, yeah. and you're not having to come up with stuff on the spot. No, I can drive around and think of lines. You know, that's yeah. like not speed th dating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at that! I'm looking at your Instagram to see the stuff you've driven recently. I see AutoZam. AutoZam AZ. Oh, that thing was, was awesome. Yeah. How was it? A stock one? I think uh, so. exhaust, and that's it. There was one we drove that had a little bit of had a bigger turbo on it and it made like ninety four horsepower That's instead of eighty six. That's his next step. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We How did. fun is it though? It's a lot of fun. Uh, we drove the only other K car I've ever driven was a Honda Beat. Mm -hmm. Drove it on the same road. Direct comparison. Um, Which did like, you I, like better? I like the AutoZam, but that's only because <sighs> the like turbo. You can actually feel the turbo in yeah. the AutoZam. Surprisingly enough, um, and I like that feeling rather than the Honda, which is like rev to fourteen thousand or thirteen thousand right. RPM, whatever it is. Right. The only one we haven't filmed yet is the Cappuccino. And I, I did wanna, a Cappuccino. How is that? I really uh, want the Cappuccino drive one. to me drives the best. Yeah. But the AutoZam is the the coolest and weirdest. Oh, it has the doors. You need to. The the AutoZam I drove like the rear suspension was like really wallowy and shitty, mm -hmm. and apparently it's the same as a Mazda three two three front suspension. I think yeah, the owner was telling me and that. And so like yeah, that. I think there's some things you can do to improve that, but they they weren't done on this car. Um, but it, as like a city car, mm -hmm. fucking cool. Yes, so cool. Did I, you dr did you drive the Mazda Speed uh, or kind of like a standard one? Shit, because I think the Cappuccino? Mazda Speed has you know the uh, sorry not the Cappuccino for the AutoZam. The, 
I don't know. Has, like, What's the, the big, difference? It has the big wing on the front. There's a few body differences. A um, big wing on the front? Sorry, on the back. It had, it, mine had a wing on the back. It had a big, like a super wing on the back. Oh, almost. okay. Yeah. That was at the Mazda Speed one? That I know that comes stock on the Mazda Speed. Yeah. 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 It was a yellow one. I'm sure if you, it's like one of the first images. I don't know. I think it was that. Isn't it that? There. Isn't that me? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. That, that oh, should wow. be an AutoZam one. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Looks thing is awesome fucking badass. Yeah. yeah. People and oh, by the way, and... I love that coat. That's my that's my like <laughs> my old English shooting jacket that I yeah. love. Yeah, that was the car. Yeah, lovely so, car. So cappuccinos, I guess they're like legal now to import. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. A cappuccino is is really like a, a an even shrunker Miata, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I have a video coming out. Uh, it's in the queue. We edited it. Yeah, I should just set you up with that guy. He loves media exposure on his car. You want to you want to try and get that guy out? Do you want to do a cappuccino? I would love to. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Remind me after the show, and we'll email that guy. So uh, so maybe we can get that sorted. The only reason I um, I can't buy a cappuccino now is because you guys can buy a cappuccino. Like the oh, moment the it becomes are too the high? moment it becomes legal yeah. in the states. Um, the Honda Beat we filmed. The guy imported Cry it. Cry me a landed. river. How's your R thirty four importing going? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you guys instead of whining about it? Why don't you guys buy, buy them ahead of the curve? Yeah. They start going up about a year before they become legal here. Well, everything. I think everything. you guys could probably find a way to buy some of them and then make money. Yep. That seems like an easy gig. I, know I would do it myself. They're a lot more expensive than like a cappuccino. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Like the Honda Beat was like, I think, landed like three, 4,000 Canadian. It was like really cheap. And um, the moment it became legal in the States, it doubled in value. Yeah. R34s right. are like eight. 8,000 Canadian? You can get a GTT, <laughs> yeah, for about eight to 10. And that's the uh, RB25. Yeah, but, a G, but then a GTR drive. is 50. <laughs> GTR, or G, an R34 GTR is still expensive, even I, in Canada. Yeah. You can get exactly. a one that's been crashed previously for about 40. No and that's no. I, I, I've driven one. No, I drove one of those, you. and the oil pump blew up while I was driving. Yeah, no, wow. no, we don't want that. I just got no. out deadpan. I Listen, think that was amazing. You don't want a car that's been crashed that's from a country that isn't fucking yours. <laughs> just I had an R32, right? Yeah, and yeah, oh, and sure. we're actually in LA. We're pretty lucky, even though Skylines are not legal in California. Fontana Nissan will work on them which is a nice oh, service wow. to the community. Yeah, no kidding. But uh, my car didn't have air conditioning. It was supposed to, but it didn't. And they didn't have the first clue how to go about fixing it. The parts are just like, meh. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, I don't want to start down that road. At least even with a 911, if it's expensive, they know where to get the shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, here, yeah, I can get that. It's a thousand bucks. You go, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But they don't go... I don't know. <laughs> I'll build you a thousand horsepower motor. I go, but I just want air conditioning. They go, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I think there's a big enough market now. There's definitely kind of two or three um, JDM specific shops yeah. for like SR20s and RB engines. Um, in Vancouver, ask that if are... that guy could fix air conditioning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. Bet you right. that guy yeah. will build you a thousand horsepower RB before he'll put, fix an air conditioning. <laughs> think of how many true. how many swap two fours you've seen where the post or whatever just says. Heater and AC not hooked up. Yeah, no. Not hooked Cause up. Because it's, it's an afterthought, but that means the market doesn't care, and so the people that repair it probably won't give a shit. No. Yeah. A lot of the market, I'm not saying too, it's not possible, but I'm just saying I think it would be a fun goof to call those shops and ask, <laughs> how far are you willing to go to JDM? <laughs> yeah, no. A, a lot of the market is, though, a lot of the... Because you got to get inspected, obviously. Yeah. For, like, lights and tires and whatever the heck. Uh, so there are shops that are guaranteed, basically, you'll you'll pass. How does Canada right. and Vancouver feel about engine swaps? Do whatever you want. Really? Do, really? You, do you have emissions yeah. testing? or They got rid of it yeah. two years Air ago. Really? Gone. Completely, yeah. Everyone takes their cat out, cats out now. Did they get rid Fuck, of it? I thought it, Canada was super OBD progressive. Two? Why did they get rid of emissions testing? Well, because like it was really expensive, and like cars expensive are expensive so for the government. Um, I guess I well, have no idea why. I'm just glad that. Wait, rid do of they it. still pl do they still plug into your OBD two and make sure there's no codes popped up? No, no nothing. No. There's no. no checks. You used to have to go every year yeah. and get like your fuel emissions done and everything yeah. like that. They completely got rid of it. The only exception <laughs> is like if you're <laughs> if you and this is Vancouver, beautiful city, clean air. You yeah. know, yeah, um, that's crazy. But if you have a vehicle, I think it's newer than two thousand, and it comes with a cat. You're not allowed to take that cat out. Oh, that's good. Or, or something <laughs> like that, right? But every everybody with you know skylines and stuff, it's anything nobody pre two thousand. You can run it's, no it's cats. something like that. That's yeah. so hilarious. That's weird. Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm so surprised. Yeah. Vancouver is so progressive. Yeah. I would have never thought. I thought it was much more like Except California. For, like cars are like really clean as of right now. I mean, like modern cars, they're they don't really have the issues that older cars have. So 
I guess they got rid of it because there's no point. I, I mean, like obviously oh. there are certain cars that do are not like. Do, so I'm sorry. Do do like in California, you see people driving around like some proper shit boxes. Does Vancouver have much fewer shit boxes in general? We have a lot less people. Like how many people are in Vancouver? California has twice the population of Canada. Oh no, the same, the, the, same, the same population. Same? Yeah. Okay, same yeah. population okay. of Canada. How many people are in Vancouver? The actual city is, I think, 1.2 million. Is that small? And God. then I think like 3 million for the, or 2 or 3 million. It really million presents for the... bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Shaved down to the base. Your, your yeah. global stature is uh, much more than, I think, 3 million people. Okay, that buy. makes sense. Because I mean, we used to, you know, we didn't have smog laws. And then in the 70s, if you look at the pictures of LA, it was like brown clouds everywhere just because the population got really big oh, and the cars were right. shitty. So the, the percentage of people that live in Vancouver that take the cats off the cars is probably like point oh yeah. oh oh of course it's the people so, it's the people yeah. we're around right yeah. right yeah and it's like again the car community is much smaller in vancouver compared to california or like mm -hmm. la so like there's less cars there's less people there's less congestion a lot of public transit so it's just i guess not an issue i mean like i'm sure it is an issue to a certain point but right. how much money are you willing to spend to yeah, correct yeah, yeah. an issue that's not really an yeah. issue kind of thing I, maybe they're just more pragmatic about it and they just recognize that like all right look even if a couple people take their cats off like in the grand scheme of things like we've got better things to worry right. about whereas in california i think a they're broke so they can find people that they catch you know if you but if they bust you for a, a violation with a car like it's actually quite a big fine so um if they want to be a dick they can it's always something a card they can pull out um also a good excuse them to search your car if they suspect mm. you of emissions violations um they can search your car for emissions <laughs> violations if they see if they visually see like enough of them you uh -huh. know they it's i don't know if they can fully search your car but it's definitely like they can hit you with enough stuff where a search warrant could be could be like you know well there's arguable. sometimes you'll see down uh in Hun i've only seen it in huntington but they'll have what is it like they'll just put they'll set up a mobile smog station on yeah. the street and if so car is driving by there they can just point at you and ask you to pull in and then they can run your run your smog and test it and see if you are in compliance or not. Wow! So, so I think it's like if you were sit, if you got pulled in for that, and then they're looking at you're talking to a cop anyway, and they see a reason for search and seizure, then they could do that. It's not often because it's I think a lot of manpower to set up that. It's like a weird fishing right. net. Yeah. You know? yeah. But it's sort of like it's a sort of thing where like if you got busted driving like a dick on the snake, right, and the cop saw your like titanium exhaust, mm -hmm. you know, and heard your. What's you know blow off valve you know it would be another thing it's like okay you get a reckless and you get this and mm -hmm. you get this mm -hmm. and because of all that now i'm going to search your car because i smell weed or whatever right. you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah. it just becomes more shit to tack on it's not you know yeah yeah they don't really i like if they see something like we have this we or we used to have i guess this one big weekly meet for the entire uh place of vancouver and people would come from all over um to come and it got at the Largest point probably like two hundred cars every week. That's significant. It was it was fun. It was a good yeah. time. Um, nothing went wrong except the eventually the surrounding stores made complaints obviously to the police. Um, and as soon as that started happening, uh, more people started showing up because it got uh, on the news and stuff. And then one fight broke out, and from that po moment on, police would just block off all uh. of the inner or the entrances and exits and hand out VIs, a vehicle inspection to every single car for any Oof. like license plate cut a little bit or like a little bit at an angle or tint you know wow. and then they would basically do that i don't know if they have uh, authority yeah, they'd to basically car, they'd but. basically just harass you and be like oh, i'm not going back there anymore and that was that right yeah and that is like the that was the one big meet in vancouver yeah, yeah. well you they were, made parking illegal on the snake now if did you go up there we went up there once yeah yeah they yeah. The, all the whole except for that little parking lot at the top was six spots all the rest of the dirt is now it's now no parking so mm -hmm. where everyone used to gather and film people being assholes it's now they'll ticket you just for being there wow um, like you're telling me the story about um, the manager at one of the grocery stores in the parking lot by the meat. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you want to. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess, uh, basically the manager came out and was like speaking to them uh, by name. And then everybody went on to Google reviews oh, of this. No. Uh, of the, I think it was like Save on Foods or Walmart or something <laughs> like that. Um, and now the reviews for that specific Market Crossing, Burnaby, Va Vancouver, if you want to add more reviews to it, <laughs> um, is just all 1.5 stars and naming this person by name. I mean, it's kind of... No, I mean, I <laughs> I, I, I don't really yeah. feel bad, <laughs> but I kind of do. Yeah. What is that website, Zach? Is that a website about the snake and the, the rock website called Twistypedia. 
Twistypedia? Twistypedia. Is that a website to find roads? Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. Roads in Australia, Canada, Japan, United Kingdom, and the U.S. Oh, wow. look at that. Radio. Doing the Lord's work. Good for you. How about Twist? Wow, that's pretty that, cool. It's like a motorcycle site. Motorcycle guys usually have the best roads. Mm -hmm. You guys, next time you come to America, should do one of the back road, back country discovery routes like we did for our movie where it's like you go across a whole state off road. That'd be hey, cool. That'd be NSX's. so much fun. How about that? We need a different car, though. A cobalt might not be as enjoyable. But <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, when when that cobalt is almost at its end, I think it would be perfect. <laughs> Are oh, you guys? Yeah. Do you, can you ever? Can you grab press cars? We've never got a press car. Are there fleets in Vancouver? Is that um, possible? I have spoken with a couple of representatives uh, over email and they have said that there was nothing at the time so yeah it, it seems very kind of hit and miss maybe like a seasonal basically yeah. yeah I don't know what uh I don't know what Canada's press fleet situation is unfortunately it's probably slim our yeah. closest was a uh the other day which was this ne this is going back to the thing of like the owner's cars when we get a car for 48 hours uh, it's unreal uh this dealership gave us a g63 amg oh those are hilarious yeah really fun <laughs> you know, I'm, i really missed that truck really you yeah. did you like it the torque is just unbelievable <laughs> like it's unbelievable you don't want to take corners too fast in it but no. it's, it was really did you see what happens when you try um no i took I, one to a track day once really yeah, <laughs> yeah at willow <laughs> springs yeah it was dumb but it, i did and if you if you so uh, what happens is you break, you break and turn in, and you, you get a ton of understeer, obviously. Um, and as soon as you start turning in, traction control starts doing like all kinds of weird shit. You cannot turn it off. And now, as you're at the apex, you ex you hit the gas, and it doesn't matter how hard you hit the gas because it only gives you like ten percent throttle. So you're like, <laughs> and then as you unwind, unwind. As soon as you cross like two o'clock with your right hand. You get full power. It's the weirdest sound so I've ever heard on a track. So You're strange. shooting drive-bys and you go by and I'm like, why is he letting off the throttle now? <laughs> <laughs> So funny. <laughs> I heard that they're like really easy to f um to flip or like roll over. I think that's why they put that track yeah. <laughs> thing in there. Yeah. yeah, they are good off road. I'll, I, I'll full points for them. Off road. Yeah. They're funny. Already say what? What did you like? Just torque and it, I mean, it's a, honestly the biggest thing I noticed was just it's a massive ego boost. Yeah. You know, you're playing the right music, driving through Malibu, and that's like that's the biggest thing I notice about the truck. So I don't know if that says that's anything why they, about it. That's why they sell. That's why they yeah. sell. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because everyone can be a Russian dictator. Yeah, you know? right. Like, like more yeah. than anything else, what I love about that car is when you close the doors, it yeah. closes. That's, like everything is solid metal. I it's know. like how cars used to be built. Um, like really good hell. cars. Most cars yeah. were not. There's only there's a reason only one of them is still being built. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is like when you drive old cars, Matt. Uh, uh, and, you know, I, you slate things when with I the door slate, and like slate. older cars, ha cause I always have an old car too. Like they have a very loud thunk, but when you start looking at the audio signature, it's several thunks, Yeah, yeah. you know? So it's like Porsche's close once. Yeah. It's very good. But like your Mustang, <laughs> it's like, is it closed now? Nope. Still is closing. Is it closed now or still are you closing. throwing a bucket of nails down the stairs? I think I had one. I have one coming up. I don't know if you've gone through the video yet that where I actually apologized for the imprecision of the door slam. I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Mexico, then you're going to come with us. All right. I like this. I like this plan. This is good. Yeah. What's, uh, what's yeah. the most interesting thing you guys have uh, filmed any recently? Anything Anything extremely notable? Go ahead. Rav Four race inspired, uh, race inspired Rav Four. Oh, okay, <laughs> we have we have differing opinions was it on the this. Same, was it the same dude who? Does he have a fun name? Giovanni. No, okay, not that guy. Okay, I drove a guy's Rav Four as well. Tell me about yours. Uh, well, it was definitely more about the truck um, than the. Uh, I mean, okay, here we'll start. With, we'll <laughs> we'll start uh -oh. with the Rav Four. So it's got a carbon fiber hood. It's got N key uh, RPF ones, mm -hmm. and it is a track spec he wanted to basically make it into a sporty track yeah. truck he's never been to a track or anything uh ripped out the entire interior uh if you want to roll down the windows in the door card you have to it's like just like hanging really uh and the same with the mirrors hanging in the middle <laughs> entire dash around the cd player gone rear seat's still there though was it a six uh, at least yes v6 oh, he, and it had an exhaust is he like a fabricator like by trade because this seems like it sounds like he just removed things i don't <laughs> think he really added <laughs> what he put, like, <laughs> he went, he went he put in a carbon roof or did he just lay carbon over no the he roof? did it's a real carbon roof so he's never not, not roof hood, sorry. Yeah. Hood. Okay, hood. Okay, different. Yes. That's why I was like, what? No, 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 no. It's a hood. Stock it, suspension. He it's fully about. stock suspension. Yes. Okay. Yes. He and very <laughs> cheap tires. 
I have a whole new image in my head of this person. Okay. <laughs> well, like, no, you trust me. You, you don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, he went underneath the car and he removed some of the brackets that hold in the gas tank um, to like cut down <laughs> Wait, the what? Yeah. I did not it was, it was in the me. interview. Yeah, like there was like wow. a few like brackets were holding it and he like, removed one or two of them to For cut weight? down a weight. So yeah. he removed he moved weight from the bottom of the car. <laughs> yeah, he went too far. Yeah, okay. like, yeah I don't know. So yeah, let me guess though, it's fast. Yeah, it was quick. Yeah, I put I put it in low, and yeah. when I told him I put it in low, he did not know what low was. Oh no! Um, and we we were uh, uh, what Little Tahunga. We were on Little Tahunga. Great road for that truck, by the way. Uh, but is every, it open? Yeah, it's open yeah. all the way across. Yeah, someone was doing a shoot up at the top. Actually. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. It was closed for the fires for like two years. If it's reopened, that's nice. Really? No way. Yeah, oh. two years? Yeah, it was closed for a really long time. Wow. There was a huge fire up there, and the road like melted into a giant sinkhole, and it was closed. Like Holy the road cow. seemed like good yeah. condition. Like there wasn't any signs of damage well, that, or anything. They probably no. recently reopened yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that was why it was closed because they were fixing it. It yeah. took a long time. Oh, how nice. I'm sorry. Continue. But that's No, yeah. It was. I mean, we could go on about this truck, and we will, because it has some just few notable things. Uh, bumper stickers on the back got obviously two american flags which you never see canadian flags on any car in canada or in front of houses or anything you guys are very in, polite you don't want to brag yeah. right <laughs> right um but yeah alex jones stickers on the back um, alex jones yeah info wars me are, it gets you, better um oh my god roads and traveled stickers which was awesome you know i bet you love i bet you love that billing right alongside <laughs> alex jones in america <laughs> yeah yeah double america and we did we did an interview with him uh, and he came dressed as a Pokemon uh, trainer. Oh my god! Like I said, it gets yeah. Um, but like he, um, like the main idea behind it was he wanted to design it after like a fighter jet or something like that. So he, so he had a um, like a sticker of like an F something jet on the back of it. I feel like I'm on the dollop. Right. <laughs> like the like story it. just goes worse and worse. He's a really nice guy, and Super like awesome, he, yeah. like the interview was pure gold. Um, like it's gonna make a really cool <sighs> video for sure. He should hang out with. There's a guy who I saw at Cars and Coffee on Sunday that has a fully gutted uh, Prius on slicks and like SSR ultralights with like those Sparco seats with the halo <laughs> bars. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Is this guy for real? Absolutely. I don't, I, yeah. I, oh Jesus! How, how do we send this? Can I airdrop this picture? You yeah. Can't, can, no, you can't. We're on a Samsung phone. Android. Uh, oh my yeah, God! For, well, forget it's. He's wearing a zoot suit. I mean, there's really, <laughs> there's no other way to describe this. Just hold the picture up to one of the cameras. Hold that up in front because of, uh, it, he's wearing a goddamn zoot suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we pulled up, and I it, you didn't mention the fact that his. His Rav Four is champagne. <laughs> <laughs> That's a character. A Got time. spats on. Champagne and carbon really look good together. <laughs> I feel like his suit is worth more That's than his car. Awesome. But the uh, we actually filmed a what was it a Trans Am um, with the guy and he has like this cat on his T shirt. This is one of our biggest hitting videos and it says like right in the fields and it's like a little kitten like hilarious guy like he's a complete character just for and the lols. It's, but it's like it got so many views and people love it because the guy's different. He's unique and he's like he has, like he's, there's a character uh, behind that. Oh right? this this one will hit <laughs> this one will hit good. I had a guy who took brackets off the fuel tank. Can we just? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over this. All right. Does he know ahead. that he could learn to drive on racetracks in a completely stock Rav Four with an interior, <laughs> and it would be the same? Yeah, I've driven. I drive Dodge Caravans on racetracks. It's fine. You can still learn yeah, from that. Right. I, I drove a guy's Rav Four that had a. Uh, it had uh, coilovers, and it had uh, you know uh, lightweight wheels with like some you know I think Bridgestone potent like some you know decent sport tires, and it had an exhaust, and I mean that was really it. But like. It was kind of fast. Right, yeah. Like, I legit think it was as fast as, like, a, a stock STI. For real. Really? Yeah, it was fast. Right, like, sure, yeah. It, it yeah. was... I, I don't think I have a picture on the Instagram, Zach. I, I don't. I, I think you'd have to look very far and you wouldn't find it. But um, I was pretty... The guy had a weird name, like, Speedy or some, some <laughs> shit. I don't remember the guy's name, but it was... Uh, it was I, I was surprised. It was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean those like the the Rav Four V Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Good kind of power. A little, kind of a little sleeper. Yeah, they oh, go yeah. quick. I think they run like low thirteens in the quarter. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah, they're kind of quick. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty funny. Um, that's a good one. I saw you. You had a Stagia. Those are fun, right? Stagio, Yeah, that was one of our last shoots uh, back in Vancouver. He did a full R thirty. We basically it was a revisit shoot. Um, um, we shot it in stock, kind of stock form, uh, and it's making I think it was like four or five hundred wheel. 
Um, That's a good number for those cars. Yeah, six speed, all wheel drive, uh, and full R34 GTR front end. That's super lovely. awesome. Seems yeah. really, really. Stagias cool. for those in America are basically four door sky or wagon skylines, and uh, they're not quite as pretty as skylines. But there's that front end that looks good. That camera yeah. got fucked. Oh yeah. Did well, it, we're still it, using. Well, no, it, it still works, but like, yeah, it got just soaked in mud, and then that's got, why we're down here. Have you fully trashed a DSLR yet? No, you haven't ripped one no, off yet. We've never no. killed a DSLR. Oh, knock, knock wood. <laughs> yeah, we have chipped Let's, lenses, but that's about it. Yeah, uh, filters. Yeah, filters. We yeah, have like it, it just filters. looks like it's been, like uh, sandblasted. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've uh, we've had two five Ds sail off of cars at high speed. Don't you one use like three of these? Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, we did. Again. Yes, we, <laughs> we did. did. Yeah, yeah. But we Let's learned. Let's talk about physics, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't beat physics though. Um, and sometimes uh, we lost. Usually, it's actually if the car is a little is dusty if you don't clean it off so well. Right. Or if you go 130 miles an hour. Or if you go very <laughs> and fast. The, and the arm on it is an extension longer mm -hmm. than this. Yeah. Yeah. So I we have a couple with like holes punched right through the magnesium bodies and stuff. Wow. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> we buy them on Craigslist for like no money though. I don't give a shit. Oh yeah, uh, Craigslist used gear is the best. You can buy like a fashion photographer or something. It'll have a DSLR with like a hundred and fifty thousand shutter count on it, and you can buy that shit for like six hundred dollars and use yeah. it for years, yeah. like we're doing. Because <laughs> we don't <laughs> care about the shutter count. Yeah, it right? doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's fucking awesome, man. I'm glad you guys could come by. Nice little nice show. I'm glad it's sunny here for you. Oh, it's been great. This is uh, this is our summer. It's lovely. It's the same as our summer. It's, it's great. lovely. Yeah. So come out with us on Thursday. We'll we'll play with the Lotus and uh, maybe we'll ask the uh, Ring Brothers guys if we can get you some seat time. I thought that, that shoot too. was Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? We'll get back to you on okay. that day. All right. Either way, we should, we should <laughs> maybe be maybe it's yeah. Wednesday. It might be Wednesday. I don't know. We'll look. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Sweet. Smoke <laughs> Time Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Oh, actually, before I get there, what do you want to plug? Our podcast. Well, that's a good place to start. Yeah, yeah. we're on. Uh, yeah, we have our podcast, Just Roads and Travel, on Shout Engine. Uh, on Shout well. Engine, teammates yeah. represent. Yeah, and I guess, uh, yeah, YouTube.com slash Roads Untraveled, Roads and Travel .com, and uh, Instagram at Roads Untraveled. All right. Marcus yeah. and Grayson from Roads Untraveled. Thank you, guys. You have a standing invitation next time you're in Los Thanks Angeles. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Whether hosting. it's Wednesday or Thursday, we'll, we'll yeah. go out of the canyons. <laughs> All right. There we go. The Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. And uh, so so is their podcast, also powered by Shout Engine. Get your own podcast at shoutengine.com. I actually have been saying this for a really long time, but I recently had to start over because Chris Hayes actually started this podcast on Shout Engine. He started Shout Engine with this podcast. I started the Watch and Listen podcast with Cameron Weiss, all new podcast, shoutengine.com slash watch and listen. And I had to start it from scratch. So I can tell you from personal experience, it's very easy to start a podcast on Shout Engine. It literally took five minutes. It cost me zero dollars. Uh, and then when I wanted to get that podcast on iTunes and into uh, Google Play Music, each of those took five minutes. And I think within 12 hours of being online on Shout Engine, I was on iTunes and Google Play Music as well. So the approval process for that stuff is super easy. So, yeah, if you got something to say and you want to say it to a few people, ShoutEngine.com. Thanks, guys. See you later.